So I argue that we talk about ourselves and our world in the unacknowledged terms of a conversion narrative. Usually when we describe ourselves as modern, we mean to say we've broken with the religious past. And that kind of story is more or less common sense, but what's puzzling, of course, is that the world doesn't conform very well to that story. And I think that's true both in the United States and globally, in Europe, Latin America, Africa, Middle East, South Asia, East Asia, everywhere it seems. To put a point on it, while our world is distinctly modern in many ways, it doesn't really seem to be a secular world, at least not if secularism is understood as an arrangement in which politics has been effectively separated from and operates freely of religion, in which religion has been effectively privatized and removed from public life. I'm aware, on the one hand, that this is not news. The crisis of secularism and the return of religion are by now truly old headlines and they've been punched up by a whole generation of scholars. But they continue, they remain as headlines nonetheless. Um, and I think that's because we as scholars and as citizens aren't done thinking and working our way through the new relations between religion and politics that we see today. So many of our questions are getting old and many of our positions are polemically entrenched. But my aim in this book is to think about the formations of modern secular, secularism and modern religion in new ways and to open new horizons for thinking and acting within this problematic space. So in my book, I ask why it is that we're stuck within the authorized terms of a conversion narrative. I ask that is why we persist in imagining ourselves and our time as having broken with religious past. Why it is in short that we continue to understand secularism in terms of separation. I argue that we should indeed think of secularism in terms of conversion, but not in the bare terms of a conversion narrative that posits a break with the past. Positing a break is part of the transformation named by conversion, but it's only one part of a multifaceted process. Conversion, I argue, is a crystalline structure, constituted and driven by the multiple layers of transformation hidden below the authorized surface. Secularism, likewise, is a process that transforms religion and politics continuously beneath the banner idea of their separation. So my position, in short, isn't anti-secular or post-secular or anti-post-secular. Um, I do argue that we can analyze secularism more precisely by focusing on transformation rather than separation, and that shifting our perspective in this way reveals more and better political um, options.